Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Will and welcome to my channel where I discuss all these credit card rewards. So be sure to smash that little red subscribe button down below for more videos like this in the future. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss the Chase FI preferred card with its new sign up point bonus and whether or not it's worth getting it right now. So a little background on the preferred card is Chase's mid tier travel rewards card. It has a $95 annual fee and with that you get 2% or 2X back on all of your travel related spend and dining spend. So travel is very broad when it comes to Chase. Uh, it covers anything from like a simple Uber ride all the way up to booking your airline ticket well, directly with the airline or through one of the online travel agencies, you know, hotels, public transportation, very broad category for Chase when it comes to travel. Uh, now with that spend that you accumulate, all the points that you accumulate, well, you do get a 25% boost when you use those points on the Chase travel portal. So that's pretty nice. That essentially turns your uh, 2X back with your travel and dining up to 2.5X when you redeem those points on the Chase travel portal. All right, so those are two main benefits. Then of course, you do get access to all of Chase's travel partners. Uh, one good one, of course, is the Hyatt, which has a pretty good return of two cents per point when you use your points to book a hotel with Hyatt once you transfer your points out. Now, it has a new sign up point bonus. So it's a little bit different. So it's now 60,000 points as opposed to the 50,000 points it was before. The problem is, well, I guess you can call it a problem, is that now your $95 annual fee, which was waived prior, well now you do have to pay it in your first year. So is that 10,000 points gonna make up for that 95,000 or for that $95 annual fee? And the short answer is yes, it is. Uh, just simply, if you take that 10,000 points and redeem it for a statement credit, well, that's $100 in value right there. So you're just breaking even, just doing a you know, quick statement credit with those points that you get in addition to the old sign-up point bonus. And then if you think about it, actually transferring your points out or using it for travel, and then of course you get more re uh, value out of that. So if you use those 10,000 points and uh, for uh, Chase Travel Portal, again, that's you know additional 25% that you get. So that's $125 worth of value. So you're already netting about $30 over the annual fee. Uh, say you were to book or transfer your points out to one of their transfer partners, and of course you get a little bit more value. And like I said before, with Hyatt, you get about two cents per point. So that 10,000 points is actually worth $200. So you net about $100 in value once you take into consideration the annual fee. So the 10,000 points is definitely a boost. Um, like you said, I would definitely look at one of the transfer partners to get the most bang for your buck. But at the end of the day, you're at very at the very minimum, you're gonna break even. So now it's still a good time to get the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Now, the next thing we want to consider when we're looking at the Preferred card and whether or not we should get it or not is uh, comparing it to the Sapphire Reserve card. So you can only have one Sapphire card at a time. You can't get both and you can only get the sign-up bonus for one or the other. Um, so I've done a video on all the rules for Chase. Be sure to check that out for more in-depth conversation if you're new to this. Now, with the new sign-up point bonus for the Preferred card, I would say it is the card to get because it is 10,000 more points than the Sapphire Reserve card. However, there are a couple of things you want to take into consideration um, and that is the uh, lounge access that you get with the reserve card as well as the 50% boost and points that you get as compared to the 25% you get with the preferred card. So I've done a video on the uh, doing a comparison between the preferred card and the reserve card. It goes into a lot of detail. I look at my personal spend. I have a spreadsheet that I use that I also make available to you guys if you want to plug in your numbers to see how it comes down and which one is better. So I do all that, so definitely check that out for more details. But if you're someone that values the lounge access a lot, then reserve card is probably the best, better to get. If you're someone that um, is looking for a lot of flight deals, say you're signed up for Scott's cheap flights and you get daily emails on all these flight deals, then that 50% boost in points that you get when you use your points on Chase Travel Portal can go a long way. You can save a lot more points with that than compared to the preferred card. So that is another reason. So the two reasons, lounge access and that 50% bonus is the reason I would get the reserve card. But otherwise, if you don't not interested in that stuff, go ahead and get the preferred card. But again, watch the other video guys, a lot of details, but that's it guys. That's the preferred card. Um, it's a great card to have in your wallet. I know I'm personally gonna get it uh, sometime in August, September-ish. So I think my, my um, the period I have until I can get the new sign-up point bonus 
is coming up around that time. So definitely gonna take advantage of that. Hopefully they still have that 60,000 point bonus available to me, but we'll see. But yeah, guys, that's it. Let me know down in the comments below which cards you think is better and whether or not you're gonna get either one of them. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to smash that like button if it helped you out. Share with friends. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.